so today we are going to be learning how to make some smoky party jollof rice eh? <laughs> you guys i'm going to be showing you guys step by step from the scratch okay tips act secrets and without wasting your time let us get straight into business we're going to start by boiling our protein and i'm using some turkey and some cow meat okay meaning that you can use whatever type of protein that you like that you prefer that you can afford this is what i currently have in my freezer and that is why i'm using it and you're going to start by seasoning with your salt with your seasoning powder with your curry powder with your thyme with your regular spices basically and then i also added some ginger and garlic paste you guys this is just a regular fresh ginger and garlic blended into paste with a pinch of salt for preservation and a drizzle of oil if you guys want me to do a video on how i made the paste just let me know in the comment section okay i also added some chopped onions you guys as much as you want onion lovers say hi <laughs> and some pepper this is just a regular scott bonnet pepper at our dough cut into two and this is very very optional i'm dropping this in because i like pepper a lot and i always like to boil my protein with some pepper and it's just for that extra heat so please feel free to take it out if you don't want it another spice that i added which can also be optional is the nutmeg powder i like the aroma and the taste that it gives to my protein when i'm boiling it as well we're going to cover that and then did you guys notice that i didn't add water when i added the spices so you're going to just cover and leave that to boil in its own juice for about 10 to 15 minutes and then afterwards you can now turn together no stir together you guys and then we <laughs> add some water and leave this to properly boil okay so now i'm adding about two to three cups of water okay depending on the quantity of protein that we are using and you want your stock to be very very concentrated like you want it to be as tasty as possible so i left that to cook for about 25 to 30 minutes and this is what i have and by the way the turkey is a kilo of turkey um, i have about five pieces of turkey in here and then the beef is just i think about eight to ten pieces okay so we are done boiling now we're going to separate the meat the turkey the beef from the stock okay like i mentioned earlier you can use any combination of protein that you like if it's chicken that you have use chicken if it's turkey use your turkey if it's goat meat use anything that you have now we have our stock we are now going to filter this stock just to get rid of the particles in the stock so with your filter your strainer or whatever you are using just pass your stock through it till you get a clear concentrated juicy stock that we're going to be using for our jollof rice our smoky hot party jollof rice very very soon okay so can you see the particles that came out from our stock if you don't filter it your jollof rice is going to be looking very rough and dirty and we don't want that so set that aside and this is what your stock should look like when you are done filtering so make sure you don't skip this step okay now we are going to proceed to frying our turkey our protein whatever you are using your chicken your goat head <laughs> your cow head whatever you are using okay so you are not going to drop in an onion for that extra aroma and flavor you guys if you are familiar with my recipes you know we always drop an onion in our pan of oil before we fry anything meat fish yam if you don't if you haven't tried it before please try it it's going to infuse a lot of aroma in your in what you are frying and it's just going to make your neighbors know that ah something is happening in your house okay all right so now we've been frying this turkey for about 10 to 15 minutes and you are going to flip over to the other side and you can as well just grill your turkey okay if you don't want to fry it and this one is for the fit fam people but if you really want to make that authentic smoky party jello fries it's always better for you to fry your protein because you're going to be using the oil that you use in frying the protein to also make the, make the jollof rice so you guys if you can please just fry your protein in that oil because we shall be using it later set that aside now we are going to the section of the peppers <laughs> are you guys following so for the pepper combination you're going to be needing some tomatoes okay you're going to be needing some red bell pepper tartar shade depending on where you are 
what you have access to okay so you're also going to be needing what they call the cayenne pepper which can be very optional if you have the red bell pepper this pepper is also known as the bawa or the shombo in your local market i'm talking about the nigerian local market okay now you're also going to be needing the scotch bonnet pepper the abanaro pepper also known as atarodo atarodo yes some onions and some garlic which can be optional depending on what you prefer now i'm going to show you guys three methods three ways to make your pepper mix you guys because to make the best jello fries you need a very quality pepper mix base all right so the first method is the roasting method you guys are already familiar with this method you're going to get your oven tray you're going to lay your peppers on it open the tomatoes like i did right your bell peppers your atarodo your onions your garlic everything you're going to be using ginger whatever you, you want to use and you're going to just drop this in an oven to just roast to grill for about an hour or so all right so this is me trying to just put this in my oven and after allowing that to grill for about one hour this is what i have can you guys see it's going to instantly give your jello fries that very smoky sweet aromalicious <laughs> jello fries base that you are going to love so if you've never tried it before please try smoking your peppers and your tomatoes before you use it for anything not just jello fries now also for your stew and this is what it looks like after blending and if you don't have an oven you can also use your pan if you want a video on that just comment below and we're going to do a video on that the second method is to boil your peppers and your tomatoes everything and then you blend so you're going to pour your peppers and your tomatoes in your pot on medium to low heat and don't put water just split the tomatoes open the tomato juice is going to help your peppers to cook and now when it is soft i've been boiling this for the past 15 minutes and you guys it is soft already because the quantity of what i'm using is very small okay you are going to put it in the blender as it holds like that and you're going to blend it and this is what you should have this is my second preferred method i really love this method because it's going to instantly eliminate any sadness in your tomato and your stew or your jello fries is going to come out very sweet the third method which a lot of you are already used to is to blend your tomatoes and peppers and then you boil <laughs> this is the method that a lot of us grew up with and you guys it's not so bad i actually like it but i prefer the other two methods the first the roasting and the boiling before blending so you're going to leave that to cook on low to medium meat and this is what you should have after boiling for about 20 to 30 minutes depending on the quantity or peppers that you have and now you're going to set it aside so guys over to you which of the three methods do you prefer method one method two method three please let me know in the comment section let's settle this once and for all which one have you used which one do you like which one would you want would you want to try okay so now we are going to be washing our rice and i'm using the normal foreign rice this is not basmati rice and the reason why i'm not using basmati is because i don't want anybody to come and say this spice is the reason why my rice is not standing is because it's not basmati uh -uh. you are going to get your normal rice okay i added some salt some water you're going to thoroughly wash your rice and this is how to thoroughly wash your rice and i'm using about 15 cup of rice okay um the normal rice yeah we are not parboiling the rice you're going to get your raw rice sprinkle salt add some water wash till it is clear so you can fit as many times as possible if you have a sink it's better to do this in your sink if you've seen a nigerian fried rice video i'm sure you know this step already and by the way thank you so much for your feedback on the fried rice video it was quite heartwarming a lot of you said it was very detailed and beginner friendly and my goal is to just help you become a better home cook with step-by-step -step beginner friendly videos like this and if you've not seen that video okay just go and watch it it is going to help you you're going to find it very very helpful so you guys our rice is clean set that aside now to make our work easier we're going to be mixing together all the seasonings that we're going to be using for our jello fry starting with the salt and i'm using the one teaspoon uh, measuring spoon yeah the salt the seasoning powder the curry the thyme ginger and garlic powder and no you don't need to use a lot of spices for your jello fries just stick to the basic ones 
or else it's going to overpower the taste of the jollof rice the the simpler the tastier is going to be for you and if you stay to the end i'm going to show you guys the exact brand of spices and seasoning and everything that i use in this video so now it's time for us to start cooking you're going to place your pot on medium to low it i am using a stainless steel pan please don't use a non-stick pot for this recipe if you want to make the authentic party jollof rice leave your non-stick pot and bring out the aluminium bring out the stainless steel bring, bring out your cast iron whatever pot that you have but please no not stick okay now when the oil is hot the same oil we, we used in frying the meats the protein you're going to add some onion slices haha <laughs> jello fries needs onion so please don't be stingy with it so guys i've once worked as a service gear for about two kitchens one in ibadan and one in jebode and you guys when they are making that jello fries i used to look at it and i'm sharing with you all their tips acts and secrets so pay attention now you're going to get a wooden spoon a wooden spatula just anything wooden like this one okay you can get this from your local market this is what we're going to be using for the jello fries now you're going to get your tomato paste out make sure your tomato paste is at least red to an extent and quite thick like i said before at the end of the video i'm going to show you guys the brand of tomato paste that you that i use and that you can also use as well and now you are going to now fry this your tomato paste you guys you have to be very patient with this part okay you don't want to just do it anyhow you have to be very very strategic so you're going to fry your tomato paste in that oil for at least for like 10 to 15 minutes and the reason why you want to do that is that you want to eliminate any sour taste in your tomato paste and then while you are frying your tomato paste you are going to now pour the the spices and the seasoning that we mixed earlier yeah so you see how easy it is we don't have to be putting it one by one just combine all and pour it in you are going to now fry your spices with the tomato paste fry till you can literally see the oil separating from the tomato paste and this took about um i think it took about 30 minutes frying on low to medium heat and then stir continuously as you are frying so that your tomato paste will not burn so you guys as you can see the oil is starting to separate from the paste and you can tell that your paste is well fried when it's looking thicker it's looking a little bit darker and there are bubbles gathering forming in your pan you are now going to pour in your blended tomato and pepper mix so remember we learned how to make this using the three method so irrespective of the one that you choose to go for it's still going to come out lit okay I'm using the um, mix from the roasted blend so at this point you are going to mix your pepper blend and your tomato paste together thoroughly what we are trying to achieve is to have a very solid and tasty stew base for our jello fries so I added a little bit of the chicken stock to loosen it up a little bit and you're going to cover this your pot and then just leave it to fry together for like five minutes till you can see some oil dancing happily on top more like you're trying to make stew right but this time we're trying to make the stew for our jello fries you guys <laughs> don't worry we are almost done so five minutes later as you can see the stew has visibly separated from the oil and now it's time for us to introduce our washed rice okay we are not par boiling we are just going to pour in your raw rice like that the secret to getting the best and the smokiest part jollof rice is that you have to be willing to allow some of your rice grains to burn meaning that if you actually had plans of making five cups of rice always try and add like an extra one or two cup because the gods of jollof rice must be appeased with some grain <laughs> So make sure you always add like an extra cup. Now you can add your liquid starting with the stock and some water. Guys, please note, Jollof fries does not need plenty water to cook. What it needs is steam. Okay, so you want to make sure that your stock and your water is not too much. If not, you might not get that taste that you're looking for. So just make sure the water level is covering the top of your rice 
just a little bit your rice is not supposed to be swimming in an ocean of water so please reduce your water and add just enough to cover the top of your rice which is why you should mix your rice with the pepper sauce first before you add some water that way you can accurately gauge the quantity of water at this point you want to test your jollof rice for seasoning for salt my salt was not enough so i added more salt and just make sure you are sure that the paste is perfect if you need to add more seasoning please do at this point then you're going to cover this jello fries then you're going to plainly cover this up for the first boil this should take about 10 minutes by then the water would have reduced okay now you're going to use your wooden spatula to just lift up the edges of your jello fries so that the water on top can go down which is why you need to use a wooden spatula spoon anything wooden that you can use for the rice that way it's not going to break up your rice it's not going to make your rice turn mushy we don't want that we want the rice grains looking intact and standing one one as it should be so if you follow this recipe step by step trust me you're going to be making one of the best jello fries and you guys this one i'm standing by it with my full chest now at this point you're going to get what they call the foil paper this is going to help trap the heat in your jello fries remember i said that you don't need water to cook jello fries what you need is steam so you're going to use a foil paper or maybe any plastic wrap but preferably a foil paper to just cover the top of your pot this is going to trap in the heat and it's going to help your jello fries to come out tastier to cook better and to soften the rice grain as well because the rice grains are still quite hard okay so now that we've covered our pot with the foil paper you're going to cover it up with the cover and then reduce your heat to the lowest if your heat is too high it's going to burn faster and it won't cook through now while the jello fries is cooking let me show you guys the seasons and spices that we use for the jello fries the seasoning these are the two seasoning brands that i use the chicken flavor and the no chicken cubes so i like to mix them both together if it comes as a cube i would just use my blender to grind into powder and then that is what i use as seasoning you can use any brand that you like this is not a paid advert in any way okay so this is just me trying to show you guys what i actually use and then one other seasoning that you can also add to this is the maggie signature jollof sachet it has a very nice color and the aroma too is not bad okay so you can also add this to your seasoning list i added half a teaspoon of this seasoning to my mix as well mainly for the color it's quite good okay another one is this benny powdered chicken stock you guys i learned this one from the caterer that i worked with they use it a lot okay especially if your stock is not very rich and you still want your jello fries to, to come out very tasty just get this from your local market you can show them a picture of this or just tell them you want to buy benny okay and it's very good especially if you are cooking in bulk it's going to help you now another seasoning you can add is this napa jello fries seasoning it has a lot of coloring inside it to make your jello fries very red so in case if you are making jello fries and the color is not coloring <laughs> you can always use this seasoning to color your jello fries okay but if your tomato paste is very red and your pepper mix is also red you don't need this one just in case if it's not giving you that color use that spice okay now to finish up your jello fries you need a very good margarine a cooking margarine and simas is a very good brand the other brands like kings and co but this is the one that i use a pack of it is around 400 500 depending on where you are okay so just get this one if you can now for the curry and thyme i use the ducros curry and thyme <laughs> You guys this is a very very old brand and it is very very good you guys i use it a lot sometimes i don't see it to buy in the market and i have to use other brands but every single time i find it i always make sure i buy like a pack of it right so this is what it looks like it's quite it has a very nice aroma it has a, it's, it's just nice if you see it buy it okay apart from the cruise you can also use a tiger curry and thyme 
these two are the popular ones you can find in your market it comes in Isachi as well apart from the curry and the thyme now to the tomato paste okay so this is the brand of tomato paste that i use for this particular video it's called sarah there are other good ones like derica not the Sachi one please just buy the ones in can they are more concentrated than the ones in Sachi. okay another good brand is your gino your normal gino tomato paste it's not bad at all but sometimes i've heard people say that it's quite sour it has like this slappy taste that you have to fry and fry in your oil before it would leave so whichever one you want to go for okay another one is your sonia tomato paste like i said before these are not paid advert in any way i'm just giving you guys ideas on the best tomato paste that you can use for your jollof rice sonia is good because it's thick and the color is not bad at all now let's check on our jollof rice we've been cooking this for the past 15 minutes and i can tell that it is almost ready eh, eh, eh. <laughs> if you got to this point type i love jollof rice in the comment section <laughs> now you're going to use your spatula your wooden spatula as usual to just fluff this up fluff it up okay and now you're going to get some sliced onions and some sliced tomato this is going to be the icing on the cake for jollof rice your party jollof rice is never complete without it so please don't skip it so just get some onions slice it round round preferably get some fresh tomatoes slice it as well and you can remove the seed of the tomatoes if you like just garnish your jollof rice nicely with it and you're going to now add your cooking margarine as the final thing you guys the margarine is going to give the jollof rice a lot of shine and also that very nice aroma okay so make sure you don't skip it if you want to make an authentic party jollof rice now for the final stage you are now going to cover back with your foil paper and leave this to steam up again for another 10 minutes so that in total you'll be cooking this for around 30 to 45 minutes depending on how the rice that you are using is okay so cover this up leave this to steam up by now the rice should be burning the aroma should be everywhere <laughs> you're going to open it up and you guys your party jello rice is 98 percent ready you are going to now give this a very good stir like stir together you see why you need to get a wooden spoon because if you use a normal spoon it will just break up your rice you don't want that so get a wooden, wooden spoon as much as possible and then just stir this together the full list of the ingredients will be in the description box below as usual so remember to check it i'm going to list all the ingredients out with the measurement that i use for this particular um rice recipe so that you can easily replicate it you can also double the ingredients as you want so you guys we are done <laughs> with our jello rice and by the way if this is your first time on this channel yeah you're welcome on board my name is Tosin, and my goal is to help you become a better home cook so please subscribe if you haven't and today's shout out is going out to gloria thank you for dropping your comment in our previous post if you want to get a shout out drop a comment under this post to get a free shout out and a warm hug <laughs> once again if you got to this point you can also type in the comment section that you love jollof rice i want to be sure that i'm not the only one so let's meet ourselves in the comment section and you guys i'm so sorry i've not been very consistent on this app i am struggling but with this video ah i hope to stay consistent at least from now to the end of the year and now you guys can you guys see what i'm showing you can you see the burnt part of the jollof this is the real cocoa of the jollof rice if your jollof rice does not have this part ah yeah it's joko you see why you have to add an extra cup of rice for this part this part is very very important my brother loves that part now this is our jollof rice can you see how everything is standing one one your jollof rice is not too soft it's not looking mushy it should look like this and if you follow that recipe step by step like i asked you to you are going to end up with one of the best homemade party jaw law rice okay i'll be waiting for your feedback as well also i'd like to quickly add that the type of rice you use will determine the outcome of your jollof rice so make sure you go for the foreign long grain parboiled rice at least if you can't use um basmati rice you can just ask them in the market for the foreign rice if you use this local rice it's going to get too soft and you might not like it okay so you guys we have come to the end of our video thank you guys so much for watching